Hello, and welcome to Warrior Supercast, the podcast for the Wintonwood School District, highlighting the superstars of the area. I'm Jason Grzegorek, and I'm very fortunate to have with me Courtney Wilson, the Executive Director of Human Resources and Legal Affairs for the Wintonwood School District. Courtney, glad you could join us. Thank you for having me. We're used to having principals and teachers, and most importantly, the students, mm -hmm. but the one that we normally don't get to see are those that help hire. Mm. And that would be your uh, help and expertise. Mm -hmm. And we have launched all of the new tech technology and the PBL here in the district. How has that affected your role as uh, human resources? Well, tremendously. Um, this is a whole new approach to educating students, which requires um, a whole new approach to hiring teachers <laughs> and um, other support staff. Sure. Um, Obviously, you know, there was the old method. You were obviously looking for someone who had credentials in X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Now are we, how are those credentials changing mm -hmm. or how are they morphing into something that is now uh, predominantly useful for the Wintonwood School District? Mm -hmm. So um, we still need the same credentials. So, for instance, if we're looking for a high school math teacher, you still have to have the high school math license through the Ohio Department of Education. However, the attributes that we're looking for in candidates has changed substantially. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for people who um, are open to um, engaging students in a completely different way. Um, you know, so if, they're, if we are looking at veteran teachers, uh, we are looking for people that are open to changing their practice. Mm -hmm. And then if we're looking at novice teachers or new teachers fresh out of college, we want to make sure that they know what they're signing up for and that they understand that this is not a traditional model. You've brought them up both ways, the, the veteran and the newbie. Let, let's start with a veteran t teacher. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they have probably seen many different e evolutions of education. Uh, for those that are coming in, have you seen a lot of trepidation or a little more open and willingness to um, embrace this new technology? Uh, well, most of our veterans are very open to uh, this new approach. They find that it's a wonderful way to engage students who, you know, as we all know, are, are very tech savvy and, you know, they um, like things that are fast and rapid and, and uh, meaningful. Um, so we have had some staff members that have been with us for a while that um, have decided that this is not for them. Mm -hmm. And we have um, tried to support them as much as we can with professional development and whatnot, and some of them have come along and um, and met us, you know, uh, halfway, and we are still continuing to work with them. And then some have said, you know, I love Wenton Woods, I love uh, this new approach, but it, you know, I've been doing this too long. I, I'm going to go somewhere else that's more traditional, and that's been fine too. And I've actually um, helped some of those people um, get started somewhere else, you know, um, in, in a very positive way. It's just not for them. Are there those who obviously still want to be a part of the Wooden Woods Warrior tribe, so to speak, but obviously can't catch up, that are able to go in other realms, like being a, a part of a, a team or a tutor team or something to that effect now? Oh, absolutely. So one of the things that uh, we found at the high school, which is sort of our, who's been our um, flagship, you mm -hmm. know, they started this a few years ago, so they've got an advantage across the district is uh, they have tried to match veterans with new tech, not necessarily veteran teachers, but people that have been doing um, project-based learning uh, for some time and that are really into it and that have some expertise. Uh, maybe they've been to um, several professional development workshops and they've become sort of train-the-trainer types um, or they just have a passion for it. Um, but we've tried to match them with people that are more um, newer to uh, the new tech or the pro uh, project-based learning, mm -hmm. and they do have a mentee-mentor sort of relationship. And obviously working well, and obviously not a lot of push-pull, more of a pulling each other along, would you say? Um, I think, yes, I would definitely say uh, it is a very collaborative experience where um, teachers have had to literally support each other, mm -hmm. and not just teachers, but administrators. Um, have had to support each other in their learning. And I'll use myself as an example. I, I was a little resistant to um, the whole notion of project-based learning for everyone. Mm -hmm. Not the idea of project-based learning. I think it's wonderful. But the idea that everyone would do it and every teacher, every classroom, it sort of it challenged my way of thinking. 
uh, and our superintendent and our um, director of or executive director of um, teaching and learning, they had to support my learning. And so I got sure. sent to some professional development. We had fierce conversations. And, you know, I can honestly say that now I wish that I had, um, I had enrolled my own children in this experience because I believe in it that much. Well, that, that says a lot, especially coming from someone who, who seemed to almost see the, a little bit of fear, mm -hmm. it's, it felt like, but to come out being a strong supporter. Um, do you not see, maybe see, uh, kind of see that mirrored throughout the entire district? Yes, yes, that was my point. Um, so we have teachers uh, on the whole spectrum of uh, the learning continuum. Mm -hmm. I would say that at the high school, I would say that a, a lot of them are over that hump because, again, they've been doing this for a while. As we move to district-wide, um, a district-wide approach, um, you know, we ha we're bringing people along, and, um, and it really has been a very collaborative experience, and it's been professional uh, development intensive. I mean, you, we, we've really all had to immerse ourselves with um, this new approach. Do you feel that the administration has given you enough time for that? Um, Obviously, there needs to be enough ample time to, to have yourself prepared as well as those who are going to be taught. Do you feel that there was ample time? Um, ample time. Yeah, I definitely think so. I think the way that it was rolled out uh, seven years ago, mm -hmm. six or seven years. I'm sorry, I'm bad with numbers. <laughs> um, but um, I think it started at the high school, as you know, as a school within the school. Right. And what that allowed was for, for um, people that were really passionate about it and kids that were really passionate about it and parents who were very open to it to try it. Uh, we collected data as a district um, to see kind of is this a good model, is it an okay model, is it a terrible model. Um, and what we found overwhelmingly was that it really works. And so um, when our new superintendent, um, Anthony Smith, came, uh, as well as the new high school uh, principal and his team came to the district. They said, well, if this data is this good for these kids uh, that are in the Academy of Global Studies, shouldn't we uh, consider this for um, all of our kids, you know, in the high school? And so I think that data piece was critical in helping people like me that might have thought, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that brought us along. Sure. I, every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. You are listening to the Warrior Supercast here on Waycross Community Media. I am with Courtney Wilson, of course, with Human Resources and Legal Affairs. We're discussing the hiring and the changing of the guard, so to speak, mm -hmm. here in the Whitten Woods District. We're rolling, uh, we're wrapping up the 2016-2017 school year, getting ready for the 2017-2018. We already mentioned that the vet, how the veterans have kind of taken it, and as we were saying, some veterans had to say goodbye. They, this may not have been for them, or they just not decided, a lot, but a few. But yeah. a few. But right. we that meant that newbies, as we were right. as, as we're kind of mm -hmm. equaling that balance, that uh, some needed to be added to the staff. Mm -hmm. um, talking about new people coming out of college, fresh out of you know, we all remember fresh ideas, that that, that eagerness. Are you seeing that, especially with something as unique and um, not? not readily used as, as we are here with project-based learning, uh, with the new hires, or with new prospective hires? So um, we don't necessarily, or I can honestly say, I haven't seen a whole lot of candidates that have this experience. Mm -hmm. uh, Wenton Woods is actually um, leading, I think, in Ohio. We're one of the districts leading, and actually through the, the nation, leading this um, change in approach. Um, we're one of two districts that do this um, district-wide mm -hmm. in the whole nation. Uh, so I would say that we don't see a lot of candidates that, ha that have had this kind of experience. But we're not necessarily looking for people that are experts in PBL. What we're looking for is people that, um, that are open to it and that, um, you know, that once we have done some educating around it, um, that they develop a passion for it, um, as opposed to... Um, some people who honestly believe that the traditional method is the way to go and don't ever want to change. So as we were speaking in regards to the veterans that are there and now these newer people, uh, new hires coming, with the veterans being that anchor, do you feel that is a great merge and marriage between the new and the old coming in? 
Uh, absolutely, yeah. I think that um, having a nice mix of um, veterans is great for um, you know that institutional memory, and that is very key. And uh, with with respect to our student relationships with families in the district, um, and then having a, a nice fresh group of people coming in um, infuses new ideas. And um, you know, a lot of times, especially if they're fresh out of school, they don't. They don't have set beliefs yet, and so sometimes um, they're very easy to work with because they will um, readily adopt the model as opposed to some, some people who've taught for a while, you know, have a way of doing it. They have their own bag of tricks, and sometimes it's a little difficult to convince them that, you know, those tricks are great and they work, but we want you to try this too. And people, people, as you know, sometimes hold on to what they know. Oh, sure. It, it, it's that familiarity, that, right. that almost a security blanket, so to speak. Right. Um, and as we finally see that completed rollout of the entire district, which, you know, we're, we're just getting there and, and we've, we've ran with it maybe one, two, three years and we've got a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that uh, your job might get a little bit more difficult considering you're going to have so many resumes on the desks yes. to be able to, to start saying yes, or we're maybe adding different types of classes? Do you think, do you see that in your future? So I don't know about more difficult, but it definitely has changed tremendously. So I'll give you an example. We are definitely asking different questions of candidates. Mm -hmm. And one that comes to mind is I've, I've always asked the same question for years. Um, you know, what is your homework policy? Sure. So in the past, you know, I would listen for, you know, the, what, why someone's giving homework. Mm -hmm. Well, now um, with our new um, approach, we have school-wide outcomes or district-wide outcomes. And one of them is um, outcomes that matter. And... Um, and teaching that engages. So ho the homework question might be answered with, um, if a kid misses homework, that might be a few points off of their agency grade, meaning um, their uh, ability to self-regulate and to motivate, uh, motivate themselves and do their work. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to fail or they're sure. going to get a zero. Um, and so we're, we're asking different questions and we have different look for us as a result of this new approach to teaching. You're definitely then seeing a different form, not only of, of teaching, but of hiring. Definitely of hiring. Uh, it's funny that you always say, you know, you have your go-to questions and mm -hmm. we all do when we're in that uh, capability of, of bringing new people in. Um, does it change your entire means of of looking at hire in hiring when you're you usually have a set set of um, of questions of what you'd like to look for and those those key points you want to hear has that now changed your keywords basically change from you know as you're saying homework um, discipline things like that does that change now absolutely absolutely um, our whole way of teaching is is um, evolving. And so we um, are very much looking for innovators, um, people that are very reflective in their practice, people that see themselves as less teacher-centered and more student-centered, okay. meaning um, they're not going to um, stand in front of the classroom and write on the smart board or the whiteboard or the Promethean board, whatever they call it now. <laughs> um, you know, they are, that's not the, the teacher that we are looking for. We are looking for teachers that don't mind um, students challenging them, uh, that being their thought partners, students that give them feedback. A big part of um, New Tech is um, student voice. And mm -hmm. so a lot of grown-ups, you know, I'm not, I have to confess again, you know, I'm not one that's, that has traditionally been in favor of student voice, but it, through my education, I understand now that it's critical to um, student engagement. And so... Um, we're looking for candidates that, you know, are okay with students having a voice and giving them feedback, even though they're the adults. Especially if, if you've been watching or listening, you, you've seen that if a lot of the principals and a lot of the teachers are saying, you know, we're in a collaborative venture together where I may be learning something from a student and a student may be learning something from myself. So right. it, it's a great way to see that, that those are the ideas and the minds that you're looking for right. to help um, guide this journey that, you know, is a completely, with a completely different outcome. Same idea, same, right. and same telos, 
just a new means to get there. Yes. What in our final moments here? What would you say? You know, again, we, we're looking into the crystal ball. It's one of my favorite questions to look into. You know, it's like, what do you see now that once we get everything laid out and, and we're that well-oiled machine, what do you see for the district at that point? What is the next hurdle or the next challenge that that the warriors need to kind of prod themselves to look at? Well, I know a big focus has been on creating a culture that is very collaborative um, and focused on um, deep learning among students, um, as well as the adult learners in our mm -hmm. district. So, uh, when I everything that I'm saying about students also applies to our teachers and sure. our administrators. Even I mean, we all um, have to be lifelong learners, um, and we all have to. Um, um, Sorry about That's okay. That. No, um, you just basically, it sounds like you, to learn together. Learn to, together. To really yes. kind of uh, become one right. uh, in, in a, a unique sense. Yes. Well, Courtney, we have reached the bottom of our time. I told you sometimes these things blink and, and you're done. Blink and I really appreciate you coming in. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to come back at any time. Okay. As always, All right. we'd love to do that. Well, thank you so much. Thank it's been you. A pleasure. And of course, we'd like to thank you as well. If you'd like to continue the conversation, always join in each month to Warrior Supercast. As well as May is an important month, not only is it that we'll be ending the school year, but we will also be experiencing the State of the School Address. Mr. Easley and Mr. Smith will be joining the community in discussing the State of the District. That will be May 3rd at 6.30 p.m. Our location is still be to, to be determined. However, Waycross Community Media will be there to provide the video support to bring that information to you if you are unable to attend. I am Jason Grisgorek, Waycross Community Media's Government Access Coordinator, giving you the opportunity to talk to those in the know in the Wintonwood School District here on Warrior Supercast. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next month.